So, hey, Omega Heads, uh, Matters of Law radio show and YouTube channel has the honor to interview the vocalist of the Polish symphonic black metal band Darzamat, Rafael Goro and Nera Gorica. So, welcome you both. Thanks a lot for the interview, for being here. And my first question is, a philosopher at the end of the universe album is finally out, surprising the fans of the band after so many years of a wait. Um, how has been the feedback of the audience so far? The feedback was very positive so far. I mean, still is uh, because we're still uh, getting a lot of uh, comments, a lot of uh, uh, reviews are still coming back to us and uh, very positive, uh, lovely so far. Um, so yeah, we are very happy with, uh, with the feedback. And a uh, uh, few, few weeks ago, I've got a phone call from my friend from Scotland, which he told me this really hard situation, this album uh, really lift him up and give him, uh, give him, you know, a lot of good feelings in the really hard times being alone at home, uh, lockdown. So yeah, this is very important. This one call is, you know, sometimes it's more important than all these reviews from magazines. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy about that one. Mm -hmm. For sure, because it's probably something from, from his heart. Yeah, something uh, exactly. touching. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, things, the situation like this are priceless, you know. Sure. I'm very happy about this. this, something like this, you know. As I said, one call like this is more important than everything what is coming, like from the business, from magazines, you know. This is why we're doing that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, from all video clips of A Philosopher at the End of the Universe album released so far, uh, which are uh, a Philosopher at the End of the Universe, The Kaleidoscope of Retreat, released it some weeks ago, yeah? And The Great Blaze. The Great Blaze is my favorite, <laughs> I must admit. So people should check it out, by the way. And Nera, your outfit is outstanding. <laughs> and of course, the whole effect of it is incredible. So um, please tell us where was it filmed and how was the idea of it developed? Okay, so maybe I will tell it a bit about the idea behind and I will leave the location to flowers because I've got no memory for names. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we've chosen a philosopher to be our single and a kind of a representative of the album um, because it's a song that I kind of represent um, the whole idea uh, that is included in the, um, in the lyrics. Uh, so it's this, a story of um, a character, a philosopher, who decides to ask very difficult questions and kind of um, um, discover some other dimensions. And um, to do that, he needs to leave the city, leave the chaos, leave society. And uh, he needs to listen to his inner voice and uh, turn inwards. And that kind of magic, let's say, happens when you're alone. And this is exactly in, shown uh, in a video clip, of course, in a figurative way, but that's what we wanted to do. So that's the idea when it comes to location. <laughs> Lauros? You mean exactly the great blaze? The video clip. No, 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 philosopher. Yeah, that the was philosopher. The yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I would like to know also about yeah, the, yeah, the great yeah. place. All right. Um, the philosopher. That mm, there was a four four places. Um, that all of them we they've been in our area where we where we're living. Uh, uh, so this is like Silesia region in the south of Poland. Um, and yeah, there was like no more than like a. 60 70 kilometers from from where we live where where is our town okay. hometown katowice um mountains you know desert things like this um, uh, uh yeah everything what is very close to to us you know the, the we know the the places like a mountains uh, the mountains are very important for us um and uh, the great bliss was done 
uh, in the uh, industrial area. Uh, yeah. What was like a kind of factory, something like this. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not working anymore. So um, oh. it's post-apocalyptic <laughs> area. <laughs> <laughs> One over the, uh, there was done uh, um, uh, the photo session and we used this, there was like an occasion to, to took, um, there was a friend of us, we, which he done with us, um, the philosopher video clip. He was with us just in case to, to do some, you know, shots. And, uh, and then, then we decided we can use it and we can make like another video clip because the, the stuff was really good and was, uh, and also, you know, the, all this pandemic situation, um, I mean, we had a little bit different plans for a lot of things, you know, and, mm -hmm. but we decided like we have to go through the situation, we have to handle it, we have to do that what we can do now. And during the pandemic, I start watching this stuff, what, what, what was done already. And we decided like, come on, it's, it's really good stuff. It's good enough to do something with, with. and. Then uh, what was occasion, I, I've been in Poland, because I'm living in the UK, so I've been in Poland, uh, I think that was end of uh, August, like end of summer, and we decided like, let's do a couple more shots, couple more, you know, um, uh, um, there was some ideas like preparing for that one, which was done as well. So you know, collecting all this stuff and just making like a brainstorm, mm -hmm. just, it was a very natural process uh, with the great blaze. Uh, yeah, and the kaleidoscope of retreat, it was nearly the same, like uh, during the recording uh, session, we had some, some, some you know, uh, shots done and uh, then we decided we have a lot of stuff which people never seen before uh, from the geeks, you know, like a lot of backstage things like this. And in this situation, we couldn't we couldn't record it, we couldn't film it, you know. In this pandemic, it was really hard to to organize it. So we decided let's do something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another video clip which is ready, and we should release it. I think end of. Uh, January, as I remember, the, this is what we've been planning. Um, yeah, this is video clip for uh, the Sleeping Prophet, uh, which is a kind of second part of the philosopher, a, a philosopher at the end of the universe. So um, oh. yeah, we should release it really soon. And the plan was uh, we wanted to to record uh, to to film uh, a little bit more stuff but we don't know what's gonna happen in the next month so it's really hard to say we would love to do more video clips because we we really uh we, you know we had a fun <laughs> we have a fun yeah. doing these things and but let's see let's see what's gonna happen in the future uh we we would love to promote more we would love to do more but the situation is hard for everyone so slowly slowly we you know we're starting to do something different so let's see mm -hmm. okay good and um why are 11 years of hiatus was done well the reason is trivial really uh we took care of uh, everyday life um oh. we needed we needed some break uh, because, although we don't call it a break really because it wasn't on purpose, but we needed some rest after the shows we did, um, after traveling, being out of houses all the time, uh, after touring. Um, and so we stopped for a moment. And then, you know, some of us started a family, some others had to deal with some health issues. Uh, some of us emigrated, <laughs> some of us didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but I came back home. So, <laughs> okay. you know, it was really like hectic and we didn't know what was going on. And also uh, that was the time that we decided to um, take care of the projects. We had, uh, we had it in our minds um, years before they appeared. So it was the right time to do all that stuff. 
Uh, and so it all dragged on over time and we didn't even notice it was like 10 or more years. So mm -hmm. it was really trivial. <laughs> okay. You know, during this time, like, uh, uh, I don't know, there was like 2005 and 2009, we released, I guess, oh, 2004, 2009, five years, we released like, uh, I think, three albums. And we, yeah, it was a very intense time for Dazamat. Uh, as Snera said, we had like, I remember one year after Transcarpathia album, I think we, we, we had like a 60, 70 gigs in one year. And we have like professional jobs, you know, we're not, we're not musicians. I mean, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? We have a yeah. different life, you know, as well. Another life apart from band. So uh, it was really hard. And uh, yeah, so everyone needed, you know, this, 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 this small time, break. Yeah. And the small break <laughs> became like a long gap, you know, but yeah. we, never, we never forget about what we want to do and, and came back. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we are back with the new yeah. music. And I'm happy that you were back, really. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So let's speak a little bit about the side project of yours. Yeah, Rafael is a writer, according to I've read. And could you speak more about it? Have you written a novel? Um, this is, you know, this is uh, quite complicated to, I mean, it's not much what I can tell now. Hopefully next time when we, when we, when we have occasion to talk, I will tell you more. For sure. Uh, I started, you know, I started to write some, some things. I've been, I mean, I was a journalist uh, for over 10 years. Um, uh, I write poetry, I write lyrics. So let's say this is like a, it's a very important uh, part of my life, writing. And, and it was inevitable that, that they, come to, to do something much bigger, you know? And I think I'm very close and uh, I'm very close because now we have another time off, another lockdown. Uh, <laughs> so probably maybe this year, even late this year, I, I, I can, I will have occasion to release. I'm working on something and uh, uh, you can find a sample, you can find a sample of, 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 uh, of this novel, let's say, uh, in a booklet of uh, for the new album, yeah. So uh, this is everything what I can say at the moment. I'm working on that one with a good friend of mine, which is, um, uh, we started like, a, he was helping me with uh, translation, let's say, things like this. But at the end of the day, he became like a, uh, yeah, author as well, like me, you know. So we're sharing this being being author, you know, of the lyrics of this novel, and after many conversations, we decided to do to work on these things together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So in the future, we're going to speak about it. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully. Good. And you, Nera, uh, has worked extensively on your project called Nera Nature. Could you speak more about it for the ones who don't know it? Okay, so Nera Nature was brought to life um, to be kind of a safety valve, um, to express, you know, the emotions that uh, couldn't, th that is what I thought at the, at the time, couldn't find a um, place to, to be presented in Darzamat. Uh, and I wanted the band to be mm, more uh, feminine, softer, uh, lighter, more sentimental, I would say. Um, and that's exactly what it was. Um, it was never, um, it was never going to be um, a regular band. Uh, we created it, so I didn't, you know, like go very far with that. Uh, I mean, when it comes to people, because I did it with uh, Marcus, who is uh, our uh, bass player in Derzama. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that was our uh, idea to do that. And um, yeah, as I said, it is a side project. And uh, I did what I did and uh, with uh, a complete freedom 
because you know we 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 do it uh, all the stuff we do uh, by ourselves we we don't uh, want any help or we don't any contracts labels and stuff like that uh, so it's not professional that's what we do whenever we've got time and will <laughs> uh, and um, well, the door is open. Uh, now I'm focusing, and so is uh, Marcus, on Darzamat because it is like mm -hmm. more important for us. And there are nature. Mm, you never know, time will tell, but not at the moment. So it's not a regular okay. bet. Okay, okay. That would be my next question. So do you tend, intend to go on with your side project? You both, I believe you both already answered, yeah. I'm pretty sure, yes, but as Nera said, it's like, but now is moment for Dazamat. You know, it was it took us a long time to to be back with Dazamat. Uh, we already, you know, we started like three years ago to work on this album. Uh, we didn't have any pressure, you know. We didn't have any contract, like a, you know. Um, so, so now we definitely have to, you know, focus on that one. We we really, you know, like our minds are into that one really mm -hmm. deep. So uh, we already thinking about new albums. So yeah, right. it's time for that so much now. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. All right. So in the 90s, in the beginning of the 2000 uh, years, it uh, was not that easy to see women uh, in black metal scene. So do you believe you have influenced other women to get into the scene somehow? The flowers, that's for you. <laughs> yeah, for both, maybe, because yeah, there are guys having a girl, yeah, a, a woman, and you as a woman as well. So both. Oh, are she knows, um, oh, this is a really hard question. I don't know what to say. <laughs> So in the nineties, you know, we should go back to um to my you know to my uh, the previous band and the like the first uh, first laugh which which is uh, masterful, is very important uh, part of my life. Um, this is what we started the beginning of nineties with uh, all bands like Behemoth, uh, Christ Agony, Tyrannies, um, very important bands uh, on the Polish black metal scene. And that time, so um, okay, um, and you know, uh, like after we released like two albums with a uh, demo and album with uh, with Mastifal, and then we decided to do something different with bassist at the time. Simon uh, wanted to add like a more keyboards, the symphonic things. It was just beginning, not many bands was doing things like this. I remember, you know, there's 95, so not really not many bands like, uh, I remember our the biggest, uh, um, let's say influence at the time was, uh, was, was American Nocturnals with the uh, with album The Key. Um, so yeah, it was completely different time. And it was like, everything was like brand new land you know so um we decided to do like a side project and it was at the beginning like this you know just side project but the feedback was fantastic in this time as i remember uh from from mostly all all all, all this globe you know mm -hmm. so um hmm so what was the question? So I forgot. You <laughs> <laughs> asking me about? Do you believe um, you asked me if you about, you you have influenced other women to get oh, yeah, into yeah, the black yeah. man scene? No, 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 not not really, not really. No, not really. it was completely something. What we yeah, brand new thing. We didn't think how to do that. You know, just just. Mm -hmm. Just go, go through that one, try to do something different, something brand new. Yeah. Okay. It's just like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But very important part, mm. uh, moment of, uh, you know, let's say of uh, history of Dazamat is when, when, <laughs> when Nera joined us. So maybe she yeah. wants to say something about 
uh, this moment. Influencing, you know? yeah, other women. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, I never thought about it, but you know what? As far as I remember, there, there always were some women in metal. Not many, not that many as today, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't feel like I brought something new to the table because, you mm -hmm. know, I use clean vocals and that's mm -hmm. so common, let's say. When I heard uh, when I heard for the first time Angela Gosso, that was something. It was like mm -hmm. you know, blowing, and I said, "Wow, that's new." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. It blew as many girls, and uh, I'm sure of that. Uh, I, I don't feel, I don't think I did. Uh, still, I believe that when it comes to singing, uh, it's not about vocal itself. It's not only about how you use it. It's not about technique. Not so much anyway, because I think that the most important thing is to create kind of an atmosphere and to charm the listener and to uh, sell your story in the right way. Um, so, you know, um, when it all goes together, then magic happens. Mm -hmm. And if I can add something at this time, I remember even I, I remember, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. 95, Angela Gosso, Arch, Arch, Arch Enemy. No, she wasn't. There was different. There was a man. Yeah. There was a male vocalist. Yeah, so they, they had a man before, time. yes. Exactly. Yeah. I remember this time was like, I don't know. I remember Sabina Klassen, yeah? Mm -hmm. Holy Moses, Trash Metal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different thing. Doro, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yes, yes, was yes. Completely different things, you know? So. Yeah. yeah, it's really yeah. hard to find in the yeah. metal. In the metals. Yeah, but in black metal, I mean, uh, nowadays I see many bands with black metal yeah, and true. women in black metal. So yeah, I can't uh, remember is... any of them, you know, in, in, the, in the mid of 90s. Mm -hmm. Do you? you know? No, not really. Yeah. So it was really and new. It was not many, even like a woman in metal was like a. You it know, was already like, something like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were some, but of course it was already something special, yeah. But yeah. In black metal, so then it was really even more uh, special, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good. And uh, which are Dartamat plans for the future? I'm always, you know. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> I know it's a hard <laughs> question really during hard this to... pandemic. Uh, I know yeah, that, guys. It's hard to plan anything, you know. We're just trying. Uh, we're living day by day, um, but important is to say um, is we have uh, 2021, so we have a small anniversary this year. Um. It's a debut, our debut album. Is, mm -hmm. It's all 25 years old this year. Oh. So we're planning, we're planning, we release this album in a different formats like never was done before. Mm -hmm. But let's see what's going to happen in the next, as I said before, next month. We are planning to release it with uh, small su some surprises. But as I said, let's see. Yeah. Um, but as I said as well, we started working on a new album already. We have uh, some new riffs, uh, some new words. I mean, some lyrics are done already. Um, maybe EP, so yeah, let's see. Oh. The plans are always, you know, big, huge, but um, the reality there are realization sometimes, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. And uh, which are your main influences as vocalists? Oh, as a vocalist. Mm -hmm. I remember always, uh, hmm. I remember the gig in uh, Katowice back home as a ninth, I think it's uh, 1990, um, uh, it was festival, Metomania, and uh, Mila Petrosa, creator, that was something very special, very unique uh, to me, and of course, Kronos uh, from Venom, uh, King Diamond. So I can't say it's like you can. <laughs> what I'm doing is completely different. But what King Diamond was always uh, 
very important to me. And there's, you know, the albums um, like Abigail, which is, um, you know, something very, very important. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm listening this album after, come on, 30 something, it's 34, I can't remember exactly. I'm still going back, I'm, I'm you know, I keep coming back to this album, so yeah. This is something very important and definitely a Polish band, uh, uh, Kat, which is Polish legend, uh, legendary band is trash metal with, uh, with uh, let's say the lyrics are very like from black metal, you know, but yeah. with music is more like trash. This is very important, I think for all uh, Polish musicians, you know, metal musicians, let's say. Yeah. Okay. Good. And you, Nora? Very difficult to tell. Um, actually, I can't give you one name. Uh, I hardly ever listen to female vocalists, really. Hardly ever. Um, maybe um, lately, but they don't belong to metal words, so I wouldn't give you a name anyway. So. But my next question is about <laughs> out of metal, so you can give me some names <laughs> for the next question. <laughs> no, because, you know, those influences are like, when it comes to music, I can give you some, some names, but uh, when it comes to vocals, I don't know. And I never, I never, you know, like imitate vocals. Yeah, yeah. I never... it was original from you. Yeah, yeah I don't like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, I can't say anything. <laughs> all right, no problem at all. So now, which are your influences out of metal? So now, <laughs> <laughs> out of metal. Yes. Do you still have names? I'm so terrible when it comes to names. <laughs> I will just tell you that um, I listened to I'm, and it really happened like um, a few years ago. I opened up to different kinds of music. And it also showed me uh, some new vocalists I didn't know before. Um, uh, so, you know, I listened to metal, but not that much as I used to. I mm -hmm. listened to jazz a lot. I listened to uh, blues, uh, trip hop, um, really diff diff different uh, kinds of music, and different styles, and uh, especially those bands uh, that mix them all together. They are just great. I love it. So um, still, I can't give you one name, <laughs> okay. but, but I really am open to um, different stuff. The, the last thing that really uh, amazed me, and I'm uh, surprised, I will give you a name. I don't know the, her name, but her nickname is Ivor. Okay. Um, have you heard of her? No. No. I've heard, no. Oh, she's great. She's fantastic vocal, fantastic. And she can use it in a great way. So, yeah, I gave you the name. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and you, Hafa? Um, I love a lot of different music as well. Um, I love a few names. But I have really one uh, kind of weakness, <laughs> and this is David Bowie. <laughs> oh, I love it's a good guy. weakness, I believe. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 this, you know, this guy is, is, is really fantastic, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Was, his music is still, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is, this is, if I have to choose this one, this is always David Bowie, yeah. Okay. All this choreography, I love it. I remember when I've been a really young boy, uh, there was 80s. It was this era, which was now when I can see, you know, the, all the timeline. Is, uh -huh. is, 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 this is this, uh, let's dance, all these things. And it's not really what is the best for me. But you know, the, there was there was like seventies, nineties, um, oh everything, everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love this guy. Yeah. yeah. Great.
Okay, now I have a situation that is a classical situation here. I might as well, okay. So, you both are bad guys, got in trouble, and had life imprisonment as a sentence, and you can have nothing with you but three albums that you can listen for the rest of your life because one of the guards of the prison is a nice guy and gave you this gift. So which albums would you choose and why if there is a reason? Only three guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard. It, this is ter ter terrible question. I know. <laughs> terrible question. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I would choose. I already said King Diamond. Okay. What? Okay. Miguel, of course. Um, the concept. Uh, the concept. Uh, I mean, the, the the lyrics concept is is beautiful. Uh, and I love it. All this, like a, let's say, it's a kind of gothic novel, you know. <laughs> so this is, this is my water. I'm feeling really comfortable in that one. Uh, of course, music as well is fantastic. Uh, and La Roque, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> what he done on this album is is absolutely overwhelming. And David Bowie, <laughs> it'll be David Bowie as well. Okay. And oh, but which which one exactly? One album of David Bowie? Yeah, yeah. You, you oh. have only one. Only three albums, so only one yeah. from David Bowie. Um, yeah, I've, th be, I think uh, outside, outside, ninety-five outside album, outside. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Bowie. From album to album, he kept um, fans and uh, media, the, all the critics, guessing about his next move. You know, this is this is hard to explain it. If you don't know Bowie, I mean, if you know Bowie, I don't need to explain you anything. You know, <laughs> if you don't know him. Yes, it's really hard to explain it. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, he brings a lot of new elements to the rock music. So uh, from the you know. It was a it was a time. It was an era which you know, who cares how I look, and Bowie changed completely. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a lots of elements. You know, um, it's, we're talking about fifty years career. You know, and a different you know moment. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but the one this the, only this one year. The outside. No, you can you can have two albums of David Bowie. It's okay. You have well, yeah, three. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> so, Come on, I have. I have it's okay. The, but this yeah, is going to be like this for the rest of your life. Just remember yeah, that. Know. And, well, you know, I'm. Um, hmm, hmm. Okay, now I have to choose the album. Yeah, another one. So, I keep coming back to them. So, Abigail, Outside, and Slayer. Seasons in the Abyss. Let's okay. Say. Of course, it's very hard to choose uh, another Slayer album. Is yeah. So look, heaven, hello, eight. Uh, I remember, you know, um, I'm I'm 16, 15, something like this. Seasons in the Abyss. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. And you, Nera, <laughs> you had time I, to think about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> Uh, can I have four? <laughs> <laughs> Just like me, I cannot. <laughs> Only three, men. <laughs> no. Okay, we're running out of time, I know. Okay, so um, I'm going to be boring, but I don't care. Um, first of all, I would choose something that really puts me in a mood, always, and it's a soundtrack from Twin Peaks. So, sorry, I said I was going to be boring. <laughs> But that's the one that really do me good and um, does be good. But anyway, that one. Uh, also, I would go for Vardruna. And I don't care which one. Or maybe one of the last three. Yeah, probably. And uh, my number one would be still my immortal thing, uh, Pekatum, because I love everything touched by Ishan, <laughs> and that would be uh, Lost in Reveries. I love that album. I love that one. So okay. that one for sure. The rest. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, it was easy for you. That that was good. <laughs> good. And guys, to finish our interview, would you like to leave a message to your fans who are watching or listening to us? Sure. Laura, would you like to start? <laughs> Uh, thanks to everyone who um, who support the band in the in, in the you know crazy times. Uh, it means a lot of to us, uh, and we can say one thing: we're not planning anymore another ten years break. <laughs> we promise. <laughs> we promise. A lot of people asking, you know, send questions, comments like this. No, we promise. <laughs> No more break like this. That is on the tape, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So guys, thank thank you very much for this interview. Stay safe uh, and positive. This is the most important thing right now. Yeah, and we wish you a great year filled with fantastic music, and mm -hmm. uh, we hope we hope to meet you as soon as possible somewhere live. And greetings from the band. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so thanks and a I lot. Think, yeah. And I think <laughs> in the nearest future, we will, we will need more musicians, music and musicians than never before. So I think this is very important, uh, the, the people trying still, you know, creating something brand new. And it's mm -hmm. very important to, to have a support from people and support the other bands. And it's lovely in this really hard year, like 2020, we had, we had a lot of good, good albums. So I'm very glad about everything what, what people release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And stop fighting, stop fighting, keep together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the all metal scene, you know. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Okay. All right, guys. So thanks a lot. I love it, the interview. So thank you all for watching and listening to us. And stay heavy. Stay heavy. Heavy. <laughs>